Hello and welcome to this video which is going to explain what you need to do for the design of solutions section of your AQA computer science controlled assessment. So the design of solution is the first of four parts of your controlled assessment. Um, it's worth nine marks out of 63 and it's a really fundamental um, part of your coursework because it's the very first thing that your marker is going to be reading and it's where you show that you understand what's required of you and where you succinctly and really clearly put out your ideas for how you're going to do what you've been asked to do. So you've been asked to make a game or make a program, this is where you show you understand what the rules of the game are or what the requirements of the program are or the website or whatever it might be and um, how you think you know what the main parts and bits are that you need to include and how they are going to be working or constructed. So there are three main parts to the design of solution and it would not do you any disservice to break your uh, write-up when you do your design of solution into three subsections. The first of those is the user needs, the second one is an overview plan and the third one, the final part, is the detailed descriptions of the processes that are involved in your solution. Um, when I say solution, by the way, I mean program, game, website, app. Um, and when we talk about the problem that you've been set, that again, that just means the requirements, really, what it is that AQA has asked you to make. Again, if it's game, then the problem is kind of the rules of the game. Um, and so don't be too put off by, by the terminology. Um, just think in, in mind, solution means program. Okay, so in that uh, first description of your user needs, uh, you need to basically lay out that you understand and demonstrate that you understand what it is you've been asked to make. In your high level overview, you're gonna show um, having thought about what it is you need to make, um, you're going to show your ideas for well, what's the big picture here, How do those? what are the main bits that I need to make in order to fulfill all of those requirements. And then within your pseudocode or your flowchart, you show in detail how the bits that you've thought about and shown in your overview plan, you, you show the detail of how they're going to work. So let's look at these user needs and objectives. As I said, you need to demonstrate that you understand the needs of your user. So you, you shouldn't simply restate, in fact, that should say you should not, really, really should have a big not in there. You should not simply restate the description given because that doesn't demonstrate any understanding. That just tells me that you can read and you can write, which are great fundamental skills and they'll get you far. But actually, they're not gonna do you much good in this particular instance because here you need to show understanding. So how do we show understanding? Well, understanding is where you can take some information and you can process it, synthesize it, spit it out again into a slightly altered form that, that, that demonstrates you understand and, and that, that you've got the meaning. So ways of doing that might be, you might want to take um, all of the uh, things that you've been uh, told about the program or the problem, you might want to group them into meaningful sections. So let's say you were told to make a game you might want to have a section where you, you just succinctly give a, an overview of the game or the, the general goal and objective and the gameplay, the rules. Then you might want to have another subsection uh, called where you sort of detail all of the requirements around the user's interaction. So where does the user, how does the user enter uh, their names? Or is there going to be a main menu that they need to use? Um, how do they select a position on a board that they want to move to? Um, things like that. Um, how is the game won and lost? So you might want to take the description of the game you've been given and break it up into either those sections, or I wouldn't recommend using my exact sections because it, it will show you haven't worked independently. Come up with your own meaningful sections, your own meaningful groupings for the rules uh, that you've been given. You could also draw diagrams uh, of either the user interface, so that if you were asked to make a website, you could draw some kind of um, flow diagram showing uh, where you know the main, main pages and the main movement through it. Or if it's a game, you could just draw out the board and you could show um, some example moves uh, or progress of moves. So you might start on this piece and then you might move to that position and then another counter might move somewhere else as a result and you could show all of that in a diagram. Um, also saying what are not 
uh, user needs can sometimes be a way of showing understanding. So you could say, um, when I roll a three, I will um, jump up and down. I will not move forward three places, something like that. So if, if you know, just ways that the game or the rules or the program you've been given um, might be slightly uh, unusual, perhaps, or something like that, you might want to sort of show your understanding that the normal expected thing isn't happening here. Instead, something else is happening, something like that. There are lots of ways to show understanding, but the most important thing is basically you're, you're processing the data, the information you've been given, and you're, you're, you're throwing it back at the reader and saying, this is what I need to do, um, and I understand it. So some tips to help you. Be really detailed and specific. Use your own words. As I said, using your own words as a way of showing you've not just copied and dumped it all back in. Number each of your user needs or your objectives. Um, this is going to be really useful when later you need to be able to explain how a particular part of your program meets your user requirements. If you can number them, then you can say, this part of the program satisfies requirement five. Yep, really easy, no arguing. Um, if you are going to organize your user needs into meaningful sections, then uh, give those sections subheadings, names, make them really clear. Um, here's an example uh, of, for Aquadu, uh, an exemplar piece of work uh, of a designer solution where the person, the, the candidate, has taken the instructions in the um, candidate booklet and has written up those um, dis that description, that long description of the game which went over a couple of pages and has broken them up into sections. So she's taken it all together and said, well, this is all to do with the overview of the game. Uh, this is all to do with the pieces and how the pieces can uh, sort of interact with each other. This is all about, these rules are all about the dice, uh, the die and how the die works and what happens with the various results. This is all about the board and how many places the board has and what a safe space is and so on. Uh, and this is all about the main menu and the requirements I've been given about what the main menu must show um, and what options it must offer. I would have made this, I think, better by numbering these points. So this point could be 4.1, this one would be 4.2, 4.3, and then again, you can refer to them very specifically later. But the thing they've got here is they've grouped it into meaningful parts and each one is really specific. And that's key. These aren't wrapping up lots and lots of rules or requirements into one sentence. There's a sentence for every specific little detail. If you'd like to imagine uh, we were making a snakes and ladders game, you could have a point, uh, a single user need might say, each user takes it in turn to move. That's one point. Point two might be um, the user whose go it is can roll a die. Uh, point three, the die can produce a result between one and six. Uh, point four, um, the user moves as many, or the player moves on the board as many spaces as the number, as the value of the die. Um, point five might be, if the player lands at the bottom of a ladder, then they move up the board to the top of the ladder. Okay, so each of those would be another point. You wouldn't just wrap all that up in one sentence. You spe specify them and, and put them out one by one by one. Okay, we've done user needs. The, the second part of design of uh, solution then is the high level overview. This is the big picture. It's not the nitty gritty detail. This is the bird's eye view. It's what are the main pieces and how do they fit together? You could use a structure chart or you could use an overview flow chart. Um, a structure chart might be like this one for Aquadu. So this is the main program. It's made up of this process or this is the first process we encounter. This uh, calls these other processes. Uh, this process play game has a number of other processes like displaying the board, rolling the dice, showing the result of the dice, checking if a move can be made. Checking if a move can be made has some other processes that it's made up of. So this is breaking each thing down. So you could on one level say, well, the whole thing is Aquadu, um, but then this is everything the main menu has. This is all to do with the gameplay and so on. So this is giving us the big picture. These are the main parts that we're going to have to uh, include or that our programs can be made up of. Another way of doing it, going back to our exemplar, is this overview flowchart, which actually is it is a flowchart, um, but it shows in it uh, the main sort of steps that are involved. So it's got a definite start and an end, um, but it shows the entire routine of uh, one of a, of, a, of a gameplay. It goes through a main menu. Um, 
at the main menu. Do they want to enter the names? Yes, so they go here, then they go back again. Um, do they want to play? Yes, so they go down to a die roll. Uh, then player one makes a move, then another die roll, then player two makes a move. Notice there's no detail here about the results of the die um, or what happens within that move uh, even. It just says there's a roll, there's a move, roll, a move. Has the game been won? No. So it goes round and round and round until, yes, the game's been won, so we congratulate the winner and it ends. Okay, so that's an overview flowchart that you could very, very legitimately use instead of a, a structure chart to show the overall um, process, the overall plan for your program. Um, as well as a diagram, you should give some kind of description or some kind of annotation for your diagram. So again, if we go back here, you'll notice up here it says overview plan of how the problem is to be solved. Okay, short, sweet but makes the point that that's what I'm showing you, Mr. Examiner, um, so that you're not surprised that I've just thrown this chart at you and I've not described what it's for. So you must give some kind of explanation of what it actually is that you're presenting. Once you've done your high level view, we want to then go into the detail of well, what's inside each of these things. Okay, uh, and what's inside die roll and what's inside player one makes a move. And that's where you do your detailed flowcharts or pseudocode. Um, these must be annotated again, so they must explain um, what they are, what it is that you're showing uh, to your reader, and you must explain how each part fits in with the overall solution. So what does it do? What's the purpose of this part? Ideally, which user need does it um, uh, fulfill? Uh, what data does it take in? What does it give out? Um, is it called by another part of the program? So is this called by the main menu? Or is this triggered every time uh, someone rolls a three? Or uh, does this process happen when you land on a certain position within the board? You know, so how is it called? When is it checked? When is it run? Uh, that's the sort of stuff you might put in your annotation. Um, if you're gonna do pseudocode, um, a few things to bear in mind. Um, Pseudocode actually is a lot quicker to uh, make and write uh, than flowcharts. Okay, flowcharts take a long time to draw; they're fiddly. Um, if you get them wrong, uh, then you have to go and correct them, and that that can be a very lengthy and messy process. Whereas pseudocode is really, really quick to write and really quick to amend, uh, and you don't have lots of time. So even if you've never done pseudocode before, I would really recommend it. Just remember that there's no correct set of terms or words within pseudocode. Um, it's not a programming language. It looks like one and it represents one, but it is not a specific programming language. And you do not have to use specific syntax for Python or C or Java or whatever it is that you're making your program in. Okay, uh, But you might want to use things like indentation, as there is in Python, to help show if some code belongs to a function or a loop or anything like that. Now AQA have made a PDF um, which you can Google, you can find, just do AQA pseudocode guide um, which explains the terms they use in their pseudocode but you don't have to use those same terms but if you're a bit stuck and you're thinking really surely I can't just write anything I like then you might want to use these, it might help you. Uh, so here's an example of some pseudocode. So this is for a function that gets a player's name. It's called get name. Maybe if it had some parameters, I would have put brackets here and I would have described the or used the um, said what the names of the parameters are. Uh, but my function is called get name and it prints out to the user what is your name and I have a variable called name and I'm assigning the user's input to it and I return that to the calling part of the program and I end the function. Simple. Top warning for you, please do not be tempted just to copy and paste real code that you eventually make and try and pass it off as pseudocode. No one's going to fall for it. If you have real syntax in here like colons and semicolons and things that, you know, and real keywords, it's obvious it's not pseudocode and that means you've not demonstrated planning. It shows you can make the thing, which is great, and you'll get marks for that later, but it doesn't show you can plan, and you will not get marks for it. Okay, so don't do it. This section's all about planning and proving you know how to plan well. So please plan. Don't just stick in your code after you've made it. Okay, it's no good. This is about design, and it might differ from your ultimate program. 
that's fine because that's what happens. You plan things and then you change it when you make it for real. That's fine. Don't worry about that, but do uh, avoid the temptation to just think, oh, I'll leave that till I've made it and then I'll just whack my code in. Uh, some tips for flowcharts. If you're going to do flowcharts, you can do them by hand. That's absolutely fine. But obviously, it takes uh, it's a real pain if you have to make changes. Um, so, but you can just scan them in if you want to. Otherwise, use an online tool like Lucidchart or Draw.io, both of which will give you free accounts, and they're designed to help you make these things. Use straight lines with right angles. Okay, curvy lines are horrible. They um, go all over the place. They make the document really, really massive because. Um, uh, the curves take up so much space to sort of to curve around, whereas a right angle is very neat and very tidy. Um, so just don't use them. Um, make sure that your diamond blocks always, always, and only have two branches. They must always be labelled yes, no, or true, false. Okay, and you must state the Boolean test, the condition inside the diamond. So. Score is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that's fine. It's succinct. It's to the point. You don't need to write, is the score above zero? Or has the user entered their name? Just do name not equal, not null. Or name has a value, question mark. Something like that is fine. Okay, minimize your words. Be concise. Be precise. Flowcharts have a start uh, and an end block. Everything should get to an end. You shouldn't just leave things hanging. Just processes that then just have but don't go anywhere. Processes must all have lines that come out of them and it ultimately everything goes back to an end. Um, as I said before, choose a text in your blocks wisely. Okay, make them descriptive but minimal. And use rectangles to present the bigger processes that then you're going to go on to explain in their own flowcharts later. Here's a summary uh, or, or a, sorry, a reminder of the symbols again. So um, you use a sausage to start. Yep, rectangles with curved edges, a little sausage shape. That is your start and your end. Processes go in a rectangle, decisions go in a diamond, and they will have two lines coming out of them for yes and for no, and one line going in. Um, and inputs and outputs are shown in parallelograms. Here's an example. We start, we've got a process, we're setting a variable to a value, we're outputting to the user, we're accepting input in from the user, we're testing uh, the uh, value of two variables, we're comparing them, Based on that Boolean test, we're going to get yes or no, or true or false. Two different things will happen, two different outputs, and both of those then result in a final end. Simple. Keep it simple, keep it neat, and you'll do well. So, we're coming up to the end. For your top marks then, um, don't forget to write stuff. And it sounds so obvious, but you'll be amazed how many times people think they can just hand in diagrams and get full marks. You must annotate or explain what you're doing and what your diagrams are showing. Um, and relate everything back to your users' needs. Ultimately, you're doing everything that you're doing because someone's asked you to do it. You have a user, they have needs. Everything is a fulfillment of one or more of those user needs. So when you're writing about, uh, or when you're doing your design and you're doing your um, overview plan or you're, or you're designing your um, particular processes, relate them back to the user needs. If you've numbered your user needs, it'll make it a lot easier. So you can say, uh, this flowchart shows um, how I will test if the score has gone over 25, as uh, stated by, or as required by user need seven. Yep. And that can be your explanation of your flowchart, and then boff, you can get off and do your flowchart. But you've related it back to the user needs. That's really key for top marks. Uh, and speaking of marks, this is how the section is marked. This is straight out of the uh, specification from AQA. You can get this yourself. All of this relates just to this one section, design a solution. Um, and each row is one of the subsections. So the first row is all about describing and, and writing up the user needs and showing you understand them. The second one is about producing a high level overview plan. And the last one is about producing that detail, that nitty gritty uh, detail of the individual processes that are shown within your overview. Um, use this, okay? When you're writing your work, use it. Mark it yourselves as you go. Don't wait for your teacher to mark it. Be responsible, be grown up about it, and do your work and check it against this. Don't just hand it in without checking that you've done what you need to do. Because if you write it and you look through and you think, mm, actually, my um, description of my user needs um, 
it does refer to most of the user needs. I probably thought that would be good enough, but I can see that there's a difference between most user needs and all user needs. So maybe if I want top marks, I should go back and make sure I've really covered them all off. Something like that, yeah? Um, you, you should use this. You should get used to using the marking grid as you go because, again, if you just leave it to the end for it to be marked, well, it's just a faff. You've then got to go back and rework it, and you could be doing this as you go. You should be writing a section and checking and seeing which of the categories do you think it falls into best. If it falls into the first grade band, then find something that you can change to put into the second one. If it falls into the second one, see what you can do to bump it up to the third one. And do that for each of the subsections as you write them. If you can do that and you can um, take on uh, the tips I've given you in this uh, video, then you should be off to a really, really great start with your coursework. Good luck and get on with it.